Hi, it's Paul Anderson, and this is Disciplinary Core Idea ESS 2A. It's on Earth's materials and systems. And as we look at the sphere of the Earth itself, what we really find is that there are four important spheres on our planet. The first one is the geosphere. That's going to be the stuff of the Earth. It's going to be the crust that we live on, but it's also going to be the mantle and the outer and inner core, what it's made up of. On top of that, we have what's called the hydrosphere. That's going to be the water. It's not only going to be the liquid water, but the water that's as ice and water as a gas. It's also going to be the rivers and the lakes and even the groundwater. That's going to be the water that's seeping down into the geosphere itself. On top of that, we have the atmosphere. The atmosphere are going to be the, all the gases that are still hold, held to our planet, but allow us to do things like breathe and get nutrients. And then finally, we have the biosphere. Biosphere is going to really be at the interface of the other three spheres. It's where we can get nutrients from the atmosphere and water and nutrients from the soil as well. And so everywhere where life is on our planet is going to be the biosphere. And so what are some important things you should understand? First of all, energy is going to be delivered to the Earth primarily in the form of sunlight. And so we're going to utilize that energy and most of it is eventually going to be left as heat. But the matter of our planet is going to be recycled over and over and over again. And so the water that you drink used to be water that was in an ancient ocean. And it'll be water that somebody else drinks millions of years in the future. Now that's not totally true. We still get a little bit of matter from space in the form of meteorites. And we lose a little bit of matter to space as the gases are being lost into space. But primarily the matter is going to be recycled over and over and over again. The rocks give us clues as to how the Earth has changed over time. There are three types of rocks. We've got igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic, but these are constantly being um, turned in from one to another and recycled over and over again. So rocks are really the mantle that's cooled down to the point where we can live upon it. And so if we look at where the geosphere, the atmosphere, and the hydrosphere inter interface with one another, um, all of those together create weather, which is going to be what it's like today, climate, what it's like over time, and then eventually the atmosphere and the hydrosphere are going to start to break down that geosphere and we're going to get landforms forming. We can also have landforms that are being created from energy within the Earth, but where does the biosphere exist? It's where all of these other three spheres come together. You also have to understand that it's an incredibly dynamic place, the Earth. We have plates that are shifting on its surface. We have new crust that's being created. We have crust that's being broken down, so it's an incredibly dynamic place. So how do you teach all of this? Well, in the lower elementary grades, you want students to understand that wind and water are important. They shape the Earth. So they form the landforms on our planet. And those landforms open up areas where the life forms or the living things can exist. As they move into the upper elementary grades, you want to start talking about these four spheres. The geosphere, what the Earth is made up of. The hydrosphere, where water is. The gases of the atmosphere. And finally, the biosphere. And the importance of all of these interacting. And you could find no better place to see this than in the ocean itself. So it's clearly the hydrosphere, but it interfaces with the atmosphere. It's get nutrients from the, the geosphere, and it's filled with life. And that life is creating, for example, all the cyanobacteria in the oceans are creating oxygen, which is becoming part of the atmosphere. And the carbon dioxide is changing the temperature, which can impact the geosphere. And so we have all these incredible incredible interactions going on. As you get into middle school, you want to talk about how energy is utilized on the planet, that it's coming in generally in the form of sunlight, but we're also getting a lot of energy from the heat. So there's a lot of leftover heat from the formation of the earth, but we also have radioactive decay and that heat on the inside is also um, being transferred to the surface of the planet. You want to explain how matter is generally recycled over and over and over again. And then you want to start talking about interactions on our planet. So interactions globally and interactions at the microscopic level. Small changes to our Earth's surface and massive changes. And the idea that the time scale can change. We can have interactions on our planet that occur really quickly, like a volcanic explosion or an earthquake, or things that can take billions of years, like plate tectonics and formation of new landforms. As you move into high school, you want, to want students to understand that the Earth is incredibly dynamic, and those dynamics are built apart of feedback loops. So feedback loops 
are sometimes going to keep our earth stable and sometimes push it out of stability. But it's hard to understand all of the feedback loops on our planet because it's incredibly complex. We want to talk about the specifics of the geosphere and how all of these plates are moving around and how they're sitting on top of what's called this mantle, which is really almost like boiling water. However, it's just boiling rock or boiling earth. We can have areas where it's moving up and getting hotter uh, and eventually cooling down and sinking down in these convection currents. And then we want to talk about climatic change and how the earth is changing not just day to day but year after year after year after year and we can measure some of those. So the ice ages over time are, are a uh, piece of evidence that we use to show how it's changed over time. But we can even look over millions of years and so Pangaea was formed when all of the continents came together to make this one gigantic super continent. And so again, the Earth is dynamic, but it's the interface between these four spheres that's probably the most important, and I hope that was helpful.